Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. Today I'm going to be doing my August wrap up part two, which is mainly a wrap up of the books I was trying to read for Bout of Books as well as Women in Translation readathon. So I didn't read quite as many books during these last two weeks as I had wanted. Things were just taking me longer than I expected and just like general time restraints and obligations and whatnot, but I did read a pretty good amount. So yeah, I'm happy with that. So I thought I would just really briefly go over the books that I read. So the first thing that I'm just going to mention really quickly is that I finished The Three Musketeers. If you aren't aware, I was doing a read-along of this over the course of the month of August. And so I did a halfway point discussion video earlier this month, which I will link to up in the cards in case you're interested. I will be doing a like second half slash wrap up, ooh, almost dropped that, uh, video. <laughs> next week so I'm not going to talk about it here like at all. I'm just going to say I gave it a three out of five stars. It was enjoyable. It wasn't great. I like The Count of Monte Cristo more but yeah I am glad that I read this and it's really funny because in another one of the books that I read that I'm going to be talking about very soon they made a Three Musketeers reference and I was like hey I actually understand this. <laughs> so yeah, I'm very excited that I did this. Um, I'm currently thinking about what I want to read next year because that's just how my brain works. I'm leaning towards Anna Karenina or Les Mis, um, one of those two, but maybe Anna Karenina because I usually try to mix up the countries of origins as much as I can. So yeah, I've just read a French novel, so let's go back to a Russian one. All right, next up, I finished All Summer Long by Hope Larson. This is a middle grade graphic novel. Yeah, this was cute. I gave it a three out of five stars. And there's nothing really like super profound or anything like that happening in here. This is just a really fun, cute coming of age story. You are following this 13 year old girl named Bina who her best friend is this boy named Austin and he's heading off to soccer camp for about a month during the summer. And so it's about her figuring out what she's going to do all summer without him. And also just them sort of figuring out their friendship as they are both growing up and things are changing. and while Austin is away she ends up kind of befriending Austin's older sister who they've always kind of been scared of kind of avoided things like that yeah it's just like a cute fun story the art style is like this it's all in this sort of black white yellowy orange sort of tone so it has sort of that summery feel to it um there's not a whole lot to the story it's just a cute coming of age story so yeah I gave it a three out of five stars I think that this would be just a really good book to give to people middle grade aged boys and girls but like especially girls I think it does do a good job of like capturing the experience of being around that age and like trying to figure out who you are and the things you're interested in and like those awkward moments of you're growing up and so you're leaving sort of childish childish things behind and trying to figure out what you are into now, what you're supposed to be into now, all of those different things. I was actually sent three copies of this book completely on accident. I got an art copy of this book, I got this paperback version of it, and I also got a hardcover version of it. So I'm actually going to be giving away uh, two of the versions of this book. I will do one for U.S. residents and then one for basically for international res residents. There are going to be two links in the description, one for the US giveaway and one for the international giveaway. All you need to do is show that you're a subscriber and then put in your email address so that way if you win I can contact you and send this your way. Yeah I'm keeping it super simple. I'm not like putting this in the title or making this like super clickbaity or anything like that because I'm not doing this to like promote myself or anything like that. I just literally have three copies of this book and I don't need three copies of this book. So yeah, if you want a copy of All Summer Long by Hope Larson, click the link in the description. All right, the next book that I finished during Bout of Books was Mama Day by Gloria Naylor. This book is so good. Gloria Naylor is officially on my like favorite authors list because everything I've read by her, I've thoroughly enjoyed. Mama Day is definitely up there in terms of my favorites. I still like The Women of Brewster Place a lot, but this is probably like number two for me right now. This story is really different and unique and very hard to like summarize or talk about in an easy way. You're mainly following like these two different storylines. One of them is mainly following uh, Mama Day who lives in this small town called Willow Springs that's in like Georgia um, but it's like so small that it's not even on the map and you are also following her great niece who is named Ophelia everyone back home calls her Coco and she has left Willow Springs and gone off to New York City she's been living in New York City for a number of years now and yeah events occur in New York City and it sort of like goes back and forth you like Ophelia 
heads home to Georgia every August for like a week or two. Um, and so it just follows it them over the course of a couple of years. As you could tell by the cover, there is some like magical realism elements to this story as well. Mama Day has some powers, I suppose you can say. And yeah, it's just sort of this story about family and small town life and being a black person and living in New York City as well. Yeah, Gloria Naylor is just a really, really great writer. Like her phrasing and the way that she comments on certain things is just like so great. Like I underlined a whole lot in this book, but I will say there are a couple of things about this book that make it like really difficult. Um, it takes a while to get used to the style of writing. It like jumps back and forth between different perspectives and there's no real like warning. There's also like no real chapter breaks in here. Um, they're just like section breaks. I'm gonna see if I can find one. Like I'm not sure if you can see this page but just like there's a section break with like these little dots in between and that basically tells you that you are switching perspectives but it doesn't tell you like whose perspective you're switching to or what um, time you're in or anything along those lines like how much time has passed between sometimes you see like the same scenes over again but you just see them from just different perspectives so yeah like getting acclimated to all of that is a little bit rough like Gloria Naylor is not spoon feeding this story to you so you have to put in the work as well so that is just sort of like a heads up in general but yeah I really enjoyed this a lot a lot of people on Goodreads don't really like Ophelia and Coco and like her sort of storyline but I was kind of okay with it I felt like I related to her a lot I don't know if it's just because like she's in her late 20s like I think she ranges in age from like 27 to early 30s throughout the course of this book and that's basically where I'm at as well in age so maybe that's just why. But yeah I really like this a lot and I'm very happy that I bought two Gloria Naylor books when I was at the bookstore when I picked this one up because now I have Bailey's Cafe and I can just pick that one up whenever I want because I'm definitely going to be very excited to read more from her. Bailey's Cafe was actually written before this one and there are actually references to Bailey's Cafe in this book as well which I was like oh man now I kind of wish I read that one first but it's fine I'll just like pick up on all of that stuff when I read ba Bailey's Cafe. So yes I gave this four to five stars. If you haven't read Gloria Naylor yet I highly recommend her. I would say Women of Brewster Place is probably her most accessible out of the three that I've read so far um, but if you enjoy novels then not short stories because Women of Brewster Place is short stories then this isn't a terrible place to start but just be forewarned that it requires a little bit of work. All right and then I finished two books for the Women in Translation readathon. Uh, the first one was Can You Hear Me by Elena Varvillo and this was translated from Italian by Alex Valente. This book was okay. I think I went into it with like the wrong expectations but also just like the style that it's written in is not really my sort of thing. It takes place in the 1970s in this small town in Italy and you are following this 16 year old boy named Elia. Didn't realize he was a boy because there's no pronouns used in the blurb of this book. But yes it's a guy. Uh, when I originally read the blurb of this book it talks about how this boy comes to town and then things happen and then the father freaks out and so I assumed that Elia was a girl and Elia would get pregnant but that's not what happens but I wasn't that far off. So yeah it's basically a coming of age story following Elia as his father gets like laid off from his job and is also going through his own issues. This story is slightly based on the author's own experiences. She mentions in the author's note at the end of the book that her own father had bipolar disorder and so a lot of the stuff that happens with the father in this story is like based on actual experiences that she had. So all of that stuff I found really interesting. The writing in here is very like detached and stilted and so it was hard for me to connect to the story because again the story itself is very detached like the characters are very detached the way that they speak to each other is very short very clipped so yeah it's just like not my style of writing and so I had a hard time with this book so yeah I gave it a three out of five stars because the topics of the story itself was really interesting and sort of seeing this perspective of someone who has bipolar disorder and how it's impacting their family again I enjoy that or I found that to be interesting but like the writing style didn't really work for me. Um, there's also a storyline with Elia and like an older woman which never really a big fan of any of those types of storylines. So yeah I'm not I wouldn't say like run out to read this book at all. It's not 
terrible again, but it's also just not my preferred writing style. So yeah, three out of five stars. All right. And then the final book that I read was Stick Together by Sophie Hanaf. This was translated from the French by Sam Gordon. Um, so this one doesn't come out in the United States until April of 2019, which I definitely did not realize, but this is the second book in a series. Um, the first one is called Awkward Squad, and th that one is already out in the US, but I believe that this one might already be out in the UK. Not 100% sure about that. Anyways, this is basically like a French crime novel, but this is actually like a really funny book. It's not quite at like cozy mystery standard of like light and fluffy reading, but there are moments in this book that really made me laugh out loud. You are mainly following this character named Anne Capistan and she is part of this like awkward squad. She is a part of this group of like misfits who are a part of the police force. They all basically got sent to work together because no one else wants to work with them. Half of them are like socially awkward. Some of them just don't get along with other police officers. They often are forced to like investigate corrupt police officers and so people don't like them because of that. So yeah, they are just like this weird gang of police officers who work on these slightly odd cases. So in this story, Anne gets called to a crime scene and she's not really sure why she's there, but then it turns out that the man who was murdered was her ex-husband's father, so her like ex-father-in-law basically. And he also was a police officer. So yeah, the story basically just like takes off from there. Like I said, this is just like a really fun crime story. Like the closest thing I can describe this to is like the vibe that you get watching the TV show Bones. Not the books written by Kathy Reichs, but like the actual TV show, like the way that they are investigating these crimes, but they're also like this weird group of people and there's like all this levity that's provided to the show and things like that. Like it was really surprising uh, to me reading this book. Like I expected it to be like a dark French noir book and it's not really that at all. Like there's a moment in this book where because they are this gang of misfits, they don't really get the funding that they want or need or the equipment that they need and so while one of the characters is taking down like information for a police sketch he ends up making the police sketch in world of warcraft because that's the only thing he has access to and then he starts using the character while playing the game world of warcraft it's like weird things like that or like that same character is basically like a hacker and he's going into these websites and so Anne asks the hacker to look up some information like illegally then they get caught and so she basically tells him like when you're doing this stuff make sure you clean up after yourself and so he writes on a post-it note like delete illegal activity <laughs> and like literally sticks it to his computer and then like at another point in the book they like mention that he's like working on the computer he glances at the post-it note and goes like oh yeah and then like <laughs> goes back to clean up after himself it's just like weird quirky things like that that just make me smile that is just like sprinkled throughout this book. The one thing that I personally had a hard time with, which again is probably just a me thing more than anything else, and then also because this is a book in translation, I had a really hard time keeping track of all of the characters. There's a lot of people um, in this book, and so keeping track of all of the different police officers in this gang, as well as all of the other police officers that they are dealing with, because they are not the only people investigating, as well as all of the suspects and all of the criminals or all of these different people who are a part of what has conspired in this story um, was really hard for me. So yeah, that is the one thing that really docked this book for me. I had to concentrate really hard and work really hard to try to remember who everyone is. So yeah, if you are in the mood for a slightly lighter crime book, I would suggest looking up this author and seeing if you can get a copy of the first book or if you live in the UK, maybe this one is out now. But yeah, I think I'm going to try to see if I can get a copy of the first book too, just because I like this one so much and it might be fun to read it. So yeah, that's everything I have for this video. I am mostly happy with the, how much I read during the last two weeks. I was slightly in my head. I wanted it to be three each week. Well, if I'm being honest, I kind of just wanted to read all the books that I had on my TBR because, you know, I needed to read those books and I'm interested in reading those books. But yeah, it is a three-day weekend here in the United States. It's Labor Day weekend, so I'm hoping to get some reading done this weekend. If you follow me on Instagram, you will probably see me talking about it a little bit. In my head, my goal is to do three and three. I don't know if that's actually possible because it's a three day weekend. So it's like three books in three days in technically four days because on Friday when you're watching this, uh, I will be starting a new book and I also only have a half day of work. So maybe I can do four and four. 
that might be pushing it way too far. We'll see what happens. I don't know. I'm just talking now. So yeah, leave a comment down below letting me know what you guys read if you participated in Bound of Books or the Women in Translation Readathon. Um, I would like to especially know how you guys did during these last two weeks. Or you can just let me know about a really good book that you read this month. So yeah, that's all I have for now. And thanks for watching. Thank you.